Hi, this is your host, Sublin Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFI. Let's see. And today we have with us Philip Gabrowski, developer advocate at Permit.io. Philip, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. And today we are primarily going to do a demo of Permit Elements. Before we jump into that, uh, let's talk a bit about the background. Uh, what specific problem Permit is trying to solve? Uh, through permit elements. As we know, permissions are very difficult for all developers. I'm sure any developer out there has come across permissions and, and struggled implementing them. And what permit elements is trying to solve is essentially it's tackling the very difficult concept of authorization for authorization, when itself with, which in itself is quite recursive. So essentially what we're doing with these permit elements is we're offering a very simple embeddable UI experiences for the end users that are implementing elements into their system and allowing the end users to manage access control. So this might be uh, you know, other members of your team or a different department or your end customers. What exactly is permit elements? Essentially, permit, uh, permit elements is um, you know, embeddable UI components. So you get this iframe that you can generate, that, that generates for you as you uh, create these different permission levels and you assign these roles that you have created when permit into these meta permissions. And then you can generate and configure this iframe. You can change the way it looks, adjust it to your system, uh, you can adjust the different permissions that those pre-configured roles already have within your system. And then you can create that element, which essentially will give you um, an iframe, an embeddable link that you can put into your application and offer that element to your end users. And now it's time for us to jump into and uh, see a demo. What you'll be able to see on my screen is actually, before we uh, I dive into the actual element, I'd love to kind of give you an introduction into what's going on within the system. So within Permit, we actually have a bunch of users that we can previously add. So here I have created these four users, Gandalf the White, Frodo, Gollum, and myself. And all of these users have a specific role that is already assigned to them within Permit. Now, actually, if we go into the policy editor, you'll see that we have all these roles and they have these basic actions that they can perform on uh, the resources that we have specified. Now, these are just the simple roles that you can apply to users. But what if we want to kind of delegate that access a little further and, and kind of tackle that concept I mentioned, uh, which is the authorization for authorization. So if we actually jump into elements, you'll be able to see that we offer several elements within permit. Uh, the elements that we offer are user management, audit logs, approval flows are coming soon, and then there's going to be other elements that we're also offering, such as API key management, emergency access, and the list will just continue growing. Now, if we jump into a user management role, what you'll be able to see is that all these roles that we have previously configured up, uh, display here in the hidden roles. Now, here is where we battle that concept of those meta permissions. So actually, now what I can do is if I for example, I'm the super admin and I want my super admin to be the workspace owner for this specific permit element, you'll see that as soon as I drag this role into this meta permission level, we get a live render of what that element will look like for the user. And here the user actually gets control over what he can do within permit elements. So he can invite a new user, for example, permit.io, and he can assign that user a role. In this case, we have just super admin because we've offered super admin as the only role that appeared in those meta permission levels. Now, what happens if I actually drag more people in? Maybe my admin can be the manager for this element. Maybe the manager could also be the manager and the head of product can only view that element. Well, as you can see, more of those people that we have in our system start to render. And if I want to now, for example, add this new user, I get a bunch of different roles that I can apply. It's the ones that we have specified within the element. So for example, maybe I want to say that the new user will be an administrator and I can send that invite. Now within permit elements, because it's a live preview and you can see what's actually happening, we can filter these and, and see what that element will look like for those specific meta permission levels. So if I want to see what the viewer will see, well, you can see that that invitation functionality with that invitation button has suddenly disappeared. All we can do now is just search for users and nothing else. Now with permit elements, essentially, we get much more flexibility than that. It's very responsive, so it appears on every device. If you have multiple tenants, you can change the way it looks and what, what it actually look like per tenant. Um, and then you have different configuration options. You can see and assign the default role. So if I, for example, go back to my workspace owner, now the default role is super admin and we can make it something else. Maybe we want it to be the administrator. We can play around a little bit with the theming. We can change the title. Maybe I want to call it users. Uh, we can change the action. Maybe we just want to call it uh, invite for in, in this case. 
um, of, of course, we can play around with changing the background and the custom theming color if, if we wish to do so. Uh, we can also specify if we want it in dark mode or not. Then we can also have the option to display user data. So for example, we can just show the email. We can show the email and the full name if it's available or we can just show the full name. It's really as flexible as you'd like to take it. Now, the final thing is we, uh, for some elements within Permit, we can actually create a webhook. A webhook is any functionality that we might want to get notified uh, uh, about uh, when we come to configure this element. So in the case of the user management, well, maybe we want to get notified whenever a user adds someone new. So someone, uh, our end user, invite someone into the system and we want to send them a notification or an email. And that's essentially what's going to happen. Now, the final step is just giving it a name. I'm just going to call it a test. And if we just uh, create this element, what you'll see as you generate this element, this element, this element is ready to be embedded. So you can actually go ahead and get the code of that element. Now, I'm just going to copy this specific URL because I've already created it within my system. So if I jump into my code, and I replace this element right here with the one we've generated. This is the whole iframe that we actually receive from Permit. And if I go back into my simple React application, now I've created this very basic UI where I can just say that I want to gain access to the Permit element. And what you'll see is it will start loading this identity and actually offer this embeddable component within my UI, my web page, in this case, a very simple React project where I have that functionality of inviting those users and assigning them the specific role, and that user will appear as someone that's pending um, for uh, to be added into the permit element. Now, once we actually embedded that, our UI will tell us about this. So if I refresh the permit UI, what you'll see is that the element that has been, uh, we have embedded into our application, now appears that it has actually successfully embedded into permit. And the same goes for all the other elements. It's as simple as just creating that new element. As you can see for audit logs, we don't have as much of that, func of that um, functionality where we can adjust those roles. For the uh, audit log element, we can only just deal with the meta permission level of a viewer. Uh, we don't have a webhook. It's just very simple configuration. But yet again, these elements do offer that, a lot of flexibility uh, to developers who want to delegate those uh, secure permissions uh, and allow their end users to manage them. Philip, thank you so much for uh, showing us uh, how permit elements work. And I would love to have you uh, back on the show to talk about more permit IO technologies. Thank you. Thank you.